So um, actually, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to go over a review problem for you. Because um, even though this was on your test, uh, it's going to be a part of today's um, uh, pretty much learning that we're going to go through. We're going to be using this formula. So the main important thing is I want, I'm going to go over the slope formula again, because not everybody got the slope formula right on the test. So I realize that there are some things we want to make sure that everybody knows how to do. So the first thing, ladies and gentlemen, rather than, again, when I went through you know, slope formula, when we have two points, whatever they may be, 8, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 3, comma 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 2. Remember, if we want to find the slope, what the slope is telling us is what is the change vertically and horizontally between these two points. What is the change? Is I'm, you know, when we graph a line, we just need two points to connect the two points, any two points. But what's noticed about a line is the slope between two, any two points is constant. It's the same. Between any two points, it doesn't matter what two points I pick, how close or how far they are apart from each other, the slope is going to be constant. So what we want to do is see what is the change horizontally and what is the change vertically. And remember the slope formula, when we remember when we're talking about change, we're talking about subtracting. What is the change in the y values over the change in the x values? But that problem doesn't really make too much sense if I'm just doing y minus y and x minus i and x minus x because we got to make sure we differentiate between our x and our y variables. So I'll label my first point x1, y1, and my second point x2, y2. It doesn't matter which order you subtract as long as you're consistent. So the slope is the change in the y-coordinates, the change vertically between any two points, and the change in the x-coordinates, the change horizontally between any two points. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we basically plug them in. And when we do that, we want to make sure that we are using our parentheses. Okay. When you utilize your parentheses, you see that this is minus a negative, which is a double, double negative, which makes now a positive. So it's negative 2 plus 5 equals a positive 3. And 3 minus 8 is going to become a negative 5. All right? Yes. No, this, this isn't, yeah. Um, that's the same thing. Think about it this way. It's really, I should have written the answer like this, negative 3 fifths. But when we're graphing it, we like to have the negative symbol, negative sign in the numerator and denominator. Look about this. What's the answer to um, negative 4 divided by 2? What is that answer? Negative 2. What's the answer to 4 divided by negative 2? They're the same, right? So it doesn't matter which one it's in. But it's not equal to negative 4 divided by negative 2, because that's positive 2. See what I'm saying? Okay. So it doesn't matter really where you put the negative symbol. All right, so here.